still hitting up these walks as many of you may have seen i got wiped out a couple days ago from a run but i'm still continuing to move whatever way i can and that's with walking getting some sunlight getting out here is actually really beautiful and wonderful feels great i want to walk you through what in the hell happened to me the other day let's see flip this around there we go hey this hair by the way is natty it's not dyed there's not anything in the roots all you fucking jealous motherfuckers it's just the way it is my hair's just pitch black i don't know i'm 46 years old and it's just not gray so sorry about that anyway i went out on a run the other day uh, many of you've been following this journey for many years and you may know that i did powerlifting for a long time i was never into running over the last two years or so I started to pick up a little bit of running here and there. March of last year was my first half marathon, which I didn't have much training for, and I just decided to jump into. So I did that, and coming off of that, I would still work on some running here and there, but I honestly wasn't getting a lot better at it the way I wanted to. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should just commit more to this. Maybe I should just run every day. Maybe I should learn more about running. So I submerged myself in the information and in the research, and I started learning about running slow, keeping the heart rate low, nasal breathing. And so I started incorporating a lot of that stuff and sure enough, I got faster, I got better. My capacity got built out, my aerobic capacity got built out and I was getting better and better and better. What happened last week, where you may have seen the pictures from the hospital, sorry if I alarmed anybody, I was really just trying to inform people more than anything about what happened to me. And this is just a simple miscalculation of what I thought was happening. I thought that my blood sugar was low, but my blood sugar was high. Now the question is, why was my blood sugar high? And hopefully we'll get more information about that coming up when I get my blood work back. The theory on that is that I had a runner's high going and I was fired up and excited and I took a combination of Kratom and uh, ketones and maybe that led to the euphoria that allowed me to kind of push in the workout and it raised up something called catecholamines, which I'm probably saying wrong, but that can potentially mess with other hormones in the body. And I believe what was happening is my insulin levels weren't pushed up the way that I needed them to in order to dispose of the glucose into the muscles. So <laughs> I had carbohydrates with me during the workout. I was ingesting them. I probably had about 100. I was on set number seven of a workout that I was doing where I was running three quarters of a mile at around an eight minute to eight and a half minute mile pace. On the seventh set, I noticed my legs were kind of fatigued, which is normal, right? My legs were getting a little tired. I'm, I've now run slash walked on this particular day for seven or eight miles. It makes sense. Legs are getting fatigued a bit, right? As I went to do this set, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just back off a pinch in terms of the intensity. So I tried to back the intensity off and that didn't really work. Then I started kind of turning into a jog and then I stopped and then I walked. I was walking three minutes in between all of these three quarter of a mile uh, runs. And so I was like, you know, what? let me just skip the set and let me kind of start over. So start my rest period over. So I did that and I went to go again because I was trying to salvage the workout because that's what you do as an athlete. You try to figure out ways to get through the day, ways to push yourself. I still felt fine, like heart, brain, body, like everything felt fine. I wasn't, wasn't getting any weird sweats or any weird colds or I felt strong. And in fact, I never felt so good on a run in my entire life and I've never felt so strong in my entire life doing anything before. I felt incredible, incredible euphoria i felt better doing that than i did smoking a thousand three squat years ago where in the video you can see me smile as i come up with the weight because i knew it was done skiing i knew my capacity was well beyond what i did in that particular contest well i felt this way with running a lot my capacity was good but i was training well below the capacity for almost every single training session because that is a great way to get good positive inputs into the body um inputs that are strong enough to make a change and to challenge you, but inputs that you can actually recover from as well. And so this is what I was doing. And I was feeling fucking incredible, I was feeling great with every workout. And on this particular day, I remember saying to myself, I have never felt this good in my life. This is crazy. And then all of a sudden I started to hit a wall. Now, some runners talk about bonking and things like that. I don't think this was a bonk. This was much different than that because normally 
when people bonk, they're not prepared for what it is they're doing. They didn't bring enough fuel with them. They didn't hydrate properly and so forth. All these things were seemingly covered by me. I believe I did all the right stuff. I had salt, I had hydration, I had carbohydrates and everything. But what did happen is I slammed down these ketones and I slammed down this super starch. This super starch, this super carb, is a slower digesting carbohydrate and it doesn't have, it's not gonna jack your insulin up. And I think that I needed something that actually jacked my insulin up, helped shuttle the carbohydrates, either the right spot. Again, this is all just theory. No one really knows what happens. I know some of the best people in the world. They don't really know exactly what happened. And I don't think we'll ever truly know exactly what happened. I do think it was a one-off, but I'm gonna treat it as if, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat it the best that I can in moving forward, getting blood work done, and I'm gonna go based off that blood work into training again, coming up in a handful of days. And when I do that, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna ramp that up slowly, just like I did with my training previously. So I ran into a brick wall during training and I was trying to salvage a workout. It didn't work. It finally got to a point where it didn't make sense anymore. And I'm like, let's walk from the Davis Arboretum where I'm at right now. Let's walk from here over to Starbucks and see if we can get more fuel. Maybe I'll get some food. Maybe I'll get a drink and uh, maybe I'll feel better and maybe I'll fucking go home. Again, my blood glucose was high, not low. And I went and drank juice after juice after juice. The more juice that I drank, the shakier I got, but I didn't really know. I didn't know, notice that that's what was happening really until it was too late, until I drank too much. There was a guy there that stayed with me who was taking his daughter to soccer practice and he happened to see me shaking and stuff. And so he stayed with me and helped me all the way until my wife came there, which was amazing. I owe that guy a debt of gratitude. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. I got his number. So I'll have to send that guy a gift package of some kind, right? During this whole time, I didn't like feel bad. I was just weak I was getting very weak all the way to the point where i couldn't even get the juice that i had uh couldn't even get it to my lips even with a straw because my hands were shaking so bad and my voice uh it was hard to talk it kind of reminded me uh, uh if you're freezing cold i was talking like that or talking like a person that is like 90 years old i couldn't really talk i could only talk like that that's all I could get out. So anyway, my wife and I decided to call 911. I said, this is gonna be the fastest way for me to get seen. And I need to know what my blood sugar is because something's way off with that. EMTs come, they prick my finger and my blood glucose was 380, which is very high. For a normal, healthy person, it would be even after a meal, even after carbohydrates, it might get as high as like 100 and 40 or something like that but this was 380 then when i got inside the ambulance it was already down to 330 so at that point i felt pretty good knowing that this is a matter of them helping me balance out my electrolytes because i started to throw up and uh this is just a matter of getting that blood sugar to stabilize which they never really gave me anything to stabilize the blood sugar they just let the body take its time and do its thing so looking back in retrospect having the worst juice and stuff or having some juice wasn't a mistake but I had way too much. I was thinking that I was kind of like trying to let the symptoms dissipate and go away and they just didn't. I couldn't I couldn't get past it. It was like too much to overcome. Yeah, I just got weaker and weaker. It was all the way to the point where it was hard for me to stand up from the stool that I was sitting in at Starbucks to get on the gurney that they dragged me off in at Starbucks in Davis. It was quite the scene, uh, quite the spectacle, but these things happen, you know, and what was interesting is the amount of people that reached out that said that these things have happened to them in fitness before. And I have never heard people talk about this kind of stuff before. Maybe I've been living under a rock. Maybe I haven't been paying attention. I am aware of all the bodybuilders that have died from doing a lot of drugs and things like that. I am aware of that, but I never really realized how many people have gotten fucked up and passed out from deadlifts and squats. I, I've seen it, you know, I've seen the bloody noses and I've seen some of these things, but I didn't realize people were hospitalized. So many people chimed in, they were hospitalized just from taking pre-workout. They couldn't get their heart rate back down or their blood sugar went crazy. Many people reported um, that they couldn't see, they had blurred vision. And that's what was happening to me on that run, on that particular day was blurred vision. So now it's Friday and uh, that whole ordeal went down on Sunday. And uh, right now I'm just doing some walks, some stretching, some uh, myofascial release work. I'm not doing any lifting at the moment and no running, giving myself the rest that I need. So the streak of run every day is over, but that was really fun to gain that discipline 
and it really did it worked really well for me in terms of getting me ready to gain a better stronger capacity with running i guess if i'm to soul search and to reach into my gut and to be 100 percent honest on what i feel happened i got a lot of mileage in recently i've run further than i've ever run before and i wasn't really a runner before now all of a sudden i'm a runner and now all of a sudden I'm getting these miles in and there must be a price to pay. So I believe that I developed some mild conditions of overtraining that compiled over time, accumulation over time. And I ended up with some rhabdo, which is threatening to the kidneys and threatening to your health and threatening to your life. Quite frankly, I believe my creatine kinase, which is not the only indicator for rhabdo. Sometimes people make that the only thing they check and that's not the only indicator, but it, it, it can be a predictor. It was like 1,700, and I think it went down like 1,200 while I was in the hospital. But those numbers, not that those numbers are, are, are not worrisome, but a lot of times when people have rhabdo, their numbers be off the charts. And will it be like they don't even know how to fucking gauge it? And a lot of times their numbers are 10,000, 20,000 when they do find out what those numbers are. So I, I was not compromised like that. I had a case where my blood sugar was high and I thought it was low. Why was my blood sugar high? Probably because of overtraining and probably because of the combination of things that I took on that particular day, along with feeling good, this euphoria and the type of workout that I was doing. Those workouts are a little tricky on what the system needs to utilize and so forth. And I'm not qualified to really answer or talk too much about that. But my boy, Dan Gardner, who's my coach, he explains all of it coming up on our podcast and in a video. I wanted to really make sure I express and share as much about the situation as I could, but I don't even really know what there is to learn from it because I wouldn't have done anything differently. I love training. This is what I like to do. And my mother-in-law told me, she's like, you know, I worry about you sometimes. And I said, you know what? If you weren't worried about me, it would probably mean I'm not doing anything. So I understand the concern. I'm not going to ignore that. I'm going to work on this and I, I do love life and I want to live long, but I'm also not going to cower in a corner and sit around and do nothing. I enjoy my life. I enjoy my wife. I enjoy my children and hopefully I can continue to enjoy them while I'm enjoying some of the other shit that I love to do. The running that I was doing the other day, it didn't feel harder than anything I've done before. In fact, it felt kind of easier. I, I, again, I felt incredible. So now. What we're gonna do to move forward is try to pull feeling out of it because if we just go how we feel as athletes sometimes that's not a great barometer it you know again if i'm to soul search and look inward say there's two major factors on that day one is i was taking some supplements i wasn't really used to i mentioned some of that already the ketones the uh kratom and uh the super starch i think i needed a more fast acting carbohydrate to hit me to elicit the insulin to help drive with the carbohydrates in the right spot i don't even know if that science makes sense or not but this again this is all just theory trying to figure this thing out i believe the ketones may have kind of provided my body with an alternative fuel source and that could potentiate the reason why my body wasn't using the carbohydrates in that moment it's just a guess not sure moving forward i will remove the ketones I don't think I really need them. I will remove the super starch as that's something I was experimenting with. You guys know I love experimentation. You guys know I talk a lot about this head over foot action as we're walking. And I love sharing a lot of different information over time because I'm not afraid to learn from functional patterns. I'm not afraid to learn from Goda. I'm not afraid to learn from David Weck. And even though all three of those companies don't always agree on stuff, I'm like, they provide a lot of value. There's a lot of great information in there. I'm going to utilize that information to make myself better. And as I do that, because it makes me feel great and it's helping me progress, I'm going to share it with y'all. So I'm always experimenting. I'm always kind of messing around with stuff. I'm kind of a scientist in a way. I'm always playing around, messing around with different diets and different training protocols. But I didn't really realize how many other tinkerers there are out there and how many people have really, truly fucked themselves up through just even a diet. People passing out in the gym, People ending up in the hospital just because they tried like some pre-workout. There was a lot of people sharing crazy stuff. One guy was saying that he wasn't able to walk for like three months. He had to like use a walker and had to have someone come to his house to help him walk. And he still barely figured out whatever happened. And he was like a college athlete. There was a bunch of shit like that. And I was like, 
whoa, this is wild and crazy. So hopefully people are more open about this. Hopefully people start to talk about these kind of things more and they don't feel like a failure just because they went and tried something. Don't ever let anyone make you feel embarrassed because you tried something and and uh, didn't work out the way that you wanted it to. Don't ever let anyone make you feel that way. It's an incredible thing to be somebody that goes out and does shit. Too many people are worried about what they want to be or what they're trying to be. But when you just do, you just become. And a lot of times you'll get criticized for just doing. Oh, why are you doing that? Oh, you still lifting heavy like that? Isn't that bad for you? Hmm. You still power? There's not really any money in that power lifting stuff. Why are you messing with that? These are all the things, all the criticisms, all the things I've heard time and time and time again. And when I was big and fat, people thought that was unhealthy. Now that I'm more like this, lean, people think that's unhealthy. Uh, I started running. People are like, oh, that's cool. That's healthy. That's, that's great. When you start running over five miles, people are like, ah, I don't know if that's healthy. Squats, those are healthy. Oh, wait, but you squatted a... Th I almost died right there, by the way. Oh, wait, but you squatted a thousand pounds? That ain't healthy. Being strong is healthy. Oh, but not with steroids. <laughs> the, the, those, those will make you too strong, and then you'll really be sick. <laughs> this is what I love to do. I'll always be chasing it. Nothing will ever stop that. Nothing will ever compromise that. And I will always be as authentic with you guys as I can to try to share this information out. Yeah, I got fucked up on a run. I got dizzy. I got loopy. But guess what? I'm coming back and I'm still training for the Boston Marathon. I'm still releasing the Faster in 50 Days program. Still going on with everything just as according to plan. If you talk to endurance athletes or you talk to anyone, anyone that's put up fucking points on the scoreboard of life, anyone that's put up points on the scoreboard of life has gotten gotten before has gotten fucked up because it's part of the process strength is never a weakness weakness is never a strength catch you guys later Pushing.